This is an overview of mitosis and meiosis. So cells need to be able to produce more cells because we know from the cell theory that all cells come from pre-existing cells. This is done through a process known as cell division. Cell division uh, is an integral part of the cell cycle, which is the life of the cell. The division of a parent cell results into two identical daughter cells. The key event of cell division is the proper distribution of the genetic material. It is absolutely essential that the daughter cells each receive the identical DNA from the parent cell. So during the S phase of the cell cycle, DNA is replicated. It will then be condensed into chromosomes during the M phase. And then the two copies will be distributed to opposite ends of the cell so it can be properly distributed into the two new daughter cells. In eukaryotes, this process is known as mitosis and it's divided into specific stages, each visibly identifiable by the various positions of the chromosomes. For mitosis, our focus is on the chromosomes. Chromosomes are formed from chromatin stored in the nucleus. The division of the nuclear contents during mitosis is called karyokinesis. The first stage of mitosis is known as prophase. Chromatin becomes condensed into discrete chromosomes and each duplicated chromosome appears as two identical sister chromatids joined at the centromere. The mitotic spindle apparatus is formed from the centrosomes. As the microtubules extend from them and radiate out, some of these spindles will attach to the kinetochores on the centromeres. It is very important to have proper attachment of the kinetochore to the centromere. This attachment process is completed during prometaphase. During metaphase, the centrosomes are now at the opposite ends of the cell, and all of the chromosomes are lined up along the center, known as the metaphase plate. At this point, the sister chromatids are ready to be equally divided. This next stage then will be anaphase, with the separation of the sister chromatids due to the cleavage of cohesion proteins and thus the kinetochores can break apart. The sister chromatids are now individual chromosomes. Each of the microtubules will start to shrink in size, pulling the chromosomes away from each other to opposite ends of the cell. Finally, telophase begins along with cytokinesis. The two daughter nuclei are gonna form and the nuclear envelopes will arise the chromosomes will become less condensed and the spindle apparatus will de depolymerize. In animal cells, a cleavage furrow is apparent. In plant cells, a cell plate forms, creating two new separate identical daughter cells. The process of mitosis must be highly regulated and there are important checkpoints of control. These are stop and go signals that regulate the cycle. The regulation is at the molecular level by regulatory proteins called cyclins and kinases. When the regulation of the cell cycle goes awry, tumors can form. Benign tumors usually stay in one place and are slow growing. However, continued uncontrolled cell growth can result in cancer. A faster growing tumor that's malignant is one that can metastasize and travel to a new area and then continue its uncontrolled cell growth. So as we can see, uh, mitosis is all about replacing cells or adding new cells for growth. And therefore, these cells are going to need to be genetically identical. Meiosis, on the other hand, is about creating haploid gametes for sexual reproduction. Haploid means that the gametes 
uh, are going to contain a single set of chromosomes, also known as N. For humans, the haploid number is 23. Body cells, also known as somatic cells, are diploid, or 2N. That is because they have two sets of chromosomes, so the diploid cell number for humans is 46. Gametes are haploid. Somatic cells are diploid. Several steps of meiosis closely resemble the corresponding steps in mitosis, but there are some very key important differences. The two really big differences are that homologous chromosomes pair up side by side and there are two consecutive cell divisions. So I'm going to highlight the differences here. Uh, first, during prophase one, first, during prophase one, the chromosomes condense and sister chromatids are going to pair up with their homologs. These are the other sister chromatids that share the same alleles. Again, the spindle apparatus forms from the centrosomes and the microtubules will attach to the kinetochores, assisting this pairing process. There are important proteins also involved and they engage in what's known as a homology search. This assures proper pairing of the homologous chromosomes. Once the homologous chromosomes are side by side or synapsed, an important event can happen known as crossing over. Regions of the DNA of non-sister chromatids are broken and rejoined to each other, swapping the segments from one chromatid to another. This is actually visible in the form of a chiasmata. In metaphase one, the pairs of homologous chromosomes are going to be arranged on the metaphase plate. During anaphase one, those homologs will split apart and move towards opposite poles of the cell, guided by the spindle apparatus. For telophase one, cytokinesis is going to happen and the two cells will separate. The next division will then begin. Prophase two, the spindle apparatus reforms, attaching again to the chromosomes at the kinetochore. During metaphase two, the chromosomes are positioned at the metaphase plate. Note that because of crossing over in prophase one, the two sister chromatids of each chromosome are not genetically identical. During anaphase two, there's a breakdown of proteins holding the chromosomes together. This allows them to separate and the microtubules will shorten, dragging the chromosomes to opposite poles. And then for telophase two, cytokinesis occurs, and you now have the division of those daughter cells. The result is four haploid daughter cells that are genetically unique from each other and from the parent cell. So as you can see, you know, meiosis is all about increasing genetic variation in the offspring. It reduces the number of chromosomes that's in the parent cell from diploid to haploid and incorporates even more variation thanks to crossing over. With random fertilization, you then get uh, the possibility of two to the 23rd different chromosome combinations in the gamete. So the uniting of two gametes during sex creates a zygote that is two to the 23rd times two to the 23rd possible combinations. The amount of variation produced through sexual reproduction and this whole process of meiosis is quite staggering. And it's all thanks to meiosis. Thank you. Have a good day.